morning, Facebook world. Good morning as well. Um, my name is Brock Zivan. I'm a life coach, business coach, real estate agent, and a dad. And I'm just adding a couple more people that are churning in. Good morning, Nicole from Facebook world. Um, so wanted just to kind of give you guys a little intro of Chad, him and I, as you guys know, I've been going to Nashville the last couple of uh, this last 30 days and Chad and I met at the first time I went up there. And as I share with you guys, it, it, literally yesterday about networking and being around high level people, high level thinkers, Chad was one of the speakers on, um, on the stage. And I was like, I heard his story and he's going to share a little bit about his challenges he's had and the success of where he's come from. And he's taken his company, Black Diamond Money Moves. And I heard his story on the stage and I was like, I need to know this guy. I need to connect with him. I need to ask him some more questions. And so just like I always do, when people ask me like, Brock, how do you meet these people? I just am relentless and I just find out where you are and I Facebook you and I just look you up and then I'm like, hey, I need to talk to you. And that's basically how it happened with Chad and, and I. And he was like, yeah, I'll listen to you. And so uh, him and I had a great conversation. We shared each other's stories. We got to learn more about ourselves and um, looking forward to partnering together because what he brings to the table about money and with me with motivation, real estate agents don't do a very good job with money. How many of us on here, entrepreneurs, would give me a thumbs up to tell me as real estate agents, especially tax time, that we don't do a good job with money. How many would you agree with that? Raise your hand, give me a thumbs up, tell me something. Because in W2 world, we have no problem. We're like, well, the government takes my taxes. I don't have to worry about it. Well, how much do you put in your savings account? How much do you have here? And most of the time we just don't know. And so him and I, I was like, man, this would be really good for us to, to have a conversation. And so I'm gonna, turn the baton over here to Chad, but wanted to give you guys a little of a background of how, when, when I find somebody who is value, when I find somebody who's cut from the same cloth as me, a go-getter, a dad, a, a family, and just really down to earth, and they could bring value to the table, I was like, man, you need to be on our call. And so Chad, I'll let you uh, take the stage here and, and share with us a little bit about you, kind of where you came from and, and uh, how you've gotten to where you are today. Well, thank you, Brock, for having me on here. Thank you for being relentless and reaching out to me. And uh, I do believe relationships are key in getting you to where you want to go. And so I just want to say appreciate that. Um, you know, I'm going to tell you what I believe first, and then I'll kind of backfill my story. But I truly believe that everybody is created on purpose for a purpose. Raise your hand if you believe that. There's two things that often prevent people from pursuing that purpose, and that's mindset and money. We're so focused on surviving that we can't even fathom what it's like to thrive. And I say that because that was my story up until right over a year ago. And I read something this morning. It said, if you don't control what you think, you'll never control what you do. Now, that's simple, but that's so strong. So let me just share with you just a little bit. Um, NASA did a study. And listen, I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. I'm actually from Fountain Inn, South Carolina. That's, that's not a hotel. That's south of Greenville. I am a country boy. I might throw some statistics out here and research says this and research says that. I'm a <laughs> simple guy. I love my wife. I love my boys. All right. I ain't, I'm just genuine. You just take it like, like, like you get me. Right. But I'm going to tell you what I went through and how it completely changed the trajectory of my life and why I'm living intentionally now on purpose for a purpose from the inside out. This is real. This is real. So NASA did a study 
that creativity is directly correlated with being a genius or, or having some genius about you, right? And they surveyed or they, they did this little test with five-year-olds. And do you know that 98% of five-year-olds were scored as being creativity or creative, all right, that, that linked right to being a genius? That's because our minds, we dreamed, we played with superheroes. None of us were playing with losers. None of us was saying, <laughs> I'm going to be a loser one day and I can't wait. No, they didn't do that. We had big dreams. We thought we were creative. But do you know that by the time people or kids were 13 years old, 12% were, were classified as still having that creative, that, uh, that correlated with genius, being a genius. And then adults, only 2%. We have a fixed mindset. So 98%, 12%, and then 2% when you become an adult. So now if you hear those studies by a big, you know, outfit and organization, now read that. If you don't control what you think, you'll never control what you do. Mm. All right. So here's my story. I have been very successful in many ventures, okay? I have uh, climbed the ladders, but they ended up on the wrong building. They were against the wrong building, all right? There always seemed to be an obstacle up top. And I ask myself, why? What in the world is going on? I, I feel like I'm fully equipped. My heart's right. I feel like I have good intentions. What? always stops me and prevents me from taking the next level, to getting to the next level, to experiencing that breakthrough. What is it? And I'm telling you, I, I did a lot of things. And finally, it was um, recently about 2020 when, when, when COVID hit and all of that, I landed the opportunity that I thought was going to propel me finally to get me to where I'm supposed to be going. I've worked with ultra wealthy people for years, close to 20 years now. And for the last half of that, it's been in the financial services. Okay. So I had an opportunity to work with advisors across the country and put together these real high end plans. I'm talking multi-million dollars. I put together a plan for an NFL team football owner, CFO of, um, a very, well, probably one of the top three retailers in the world. And it was for the advisor for their client. Okay. So I'm earning o overrides or what have you on their efforts. This is perfect. This is what I've been looking for. I love the financial industry, you know, period, point blank. Let's roll with it. Well, then there were some ethical issues. There was some moral things that I just wasn't aligned with. And I tried to suppress that as I continued to climb the ladder because this is the opportunity of a lifetime. But I got this thing called conviction about me. And it got all over me. That's not who I am. That's not what I want to be represented with, right? So I brought that up. And I lost out on that opportunity. And I lost out on about 90 to $95,000 in commissions that I'd been waiting on for a long time. So the, the financial guy just over a year ago fell flat on his face. And if I can just be honest with you, I remember going up into my closet, curling up, breaking down. How am I going to do this? I don't want my family to feel this. I'm established. I have a house. I've got two boys. What are they going to think? And that's when God sat me down. And I really had to depend on him. I would tell you I depended on him. I would tell you that my faith is the first 
and most important thing. But when I had to really open my mind, my heart had to break for something new to be done inside my heart. This is what he told me. Chad, you've been trying to be your dad for Mm -hmm. all of these years. See, my dad had a house paid for when he was 35 years old. He retired when he was in his late 40s. We didn't live a flashy life. We didn't live a flamboyant life. But people talk about their why, why you do what you do. Well, there's a because why. Because, you know, my because I never knew I never was aware of what was driving me. And ultimately, I've been living my life in a panic mode because I was not hitting those markers that my dad did in his life. I've been living my purpose to be like my dad when my purpose is not to be like him. God created me on purpose for a purpose. And if I don't take that, And if I don't share my unique ability, my unique gift that he gave me, I'll never go anywhere. And I had to be broken to realize that. But when I tell you that I didn't think I could get more high up in potential and opportunity like I was, when my alignment became right, And I talk about my faith. Yeah, I'm just throwing it out. Hey, I live an integrated life. I don't care. I got the microphone right now. (laughs) But here's the deal. When my alignment became right, my assignment became very, very clear. And not just windows have opened up for me, not just doors have opened up for me, but whole worlds have opened up to me. And I was able to speak at the very conference that probably had one of the biggest transformation impacts on my life. So I would challenge you to look inside. Why do you do what you do? Why? Is it to make a lot of money? Why do you want a lot of money? Is it because you want a different life than what you experienced? Is it because you're trying to please somebody? Is it because I, my dad didn't put that on me. I was obsessed. Here's the deal. I'm going to share this and then I'm going to wrap up. My mom gave me hugs and kisses. If she comes right now within three feet of me, within at my front door, whatever, she's going to give me a hug. She's going to give me a kiss and she's going to tell me that I'm the most special thing in the whole wide world. And Chad, you are my heart. That's what she's going to say. And I grew up with that. My dad, on the other hand, stone cold hustling machine. He taught me to protect people. He taught me to never let people take advantage of others. He told me to never rip anybody off. But I craved this much of what my dad, I mean, my mom showed me. I wanted, I wanted this much. I just can't get that much because why can she show me this and my dad can't? I crave that from my dad. And that was ingrained inside of me. And I'm, I'm a grown man. I'm 46 years old. And I just realized that I've been, that's been my driver. That's been what's driving me. I, I wanted him to be proud of me. Is he proud of me? He's proud of me. People are different. He instilled in me some of the very values and principles that put me in this financial business because people are getting ripped off in the financial planning business and and with the traditional planning. And I won't stand for it. That's my purpose is to disrupt the mindset. Only 87, no, 87% of people ever discover their purpose. So my purpose is to help other people discover their purpose by disrupting and opening their mindset and then showing them a whole nother level of money moves, advanced money moves that the ultra wealthy do that's available to everybody, but it's not out there because it's not profitable for traditional 
advisors. That's my story, Brock, and I'm sticking to it, big dog. <laughs> I, I love it, man. That made sense, but I, I really hope that it did. I, I try to live inside out. I live intentional now. I am present with my, I soak it up with my family now. I haven't experienced fulfillment and, and just this overwhelming joy. If I'm being honest with you, mm. since I was a kid, mm. truth. Yeah. Guys, it, we got a lot of hearts on Facebook, Chad, throughout your whole conversations. Thumbs up. If this is something that you guys like, give us a thumbs up. Share with something in our chat here that you got something from it. Um, guys, this is how I – when I heard Chad speak, do you see now? Do you see why when, when I love passionate people, I love transparent people, I love people who really just understand – what it is to be inside. One of the things I wrote down is 87% of people discover their purpose. So my question right here, Chad, is why do you think that is? Like, why do you think only 87%? Why do you think 13% do and 87% don't? I have my own theory, but I'm going to, I want to put it back on you. You know, it's just, um, it goes back to, if you don't control what you think, well, you'll never control what you do. Um, you're, you've got to have a mindset shift to be the thermostat and not the thermometer. Mm -hmm. You've got to, you can't assume, and I've got a whole nother story for that. We won't go into that, but you'll get your, I shared that on stage. You get your teeth knocked out if you assume. And um, it's, it, sometimes, unfortunately, that's why I want to be the wake up caller. I want to be America's number one wake up caller to make you think a different way mm -hmm. to wake you up. Because here's the deal. If you don't an event in your life, unfortunately, things have that destruction, disruption has to happen for you to realize that, hey, you know what? What I've been doing is not right. I need to do something different. Mm -hmm. I need to do something different. I need to look at it at a different way. And, and like for me, my heart had to break for God to do something new in my heart and make me realize that I'm here. He, he's got the purpose for me. And if you're just existing, if you're just existing and life is just carrying you where you want to go, you are robbing the world. I said it. I'm on your show. You're robbing the world <laughs> of the gift that God gave you and what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Amen to everybody, that. Everybody, everybody has a purpose. I think that um, Christian was saying that I think that people are not honest with themselves. I, I always see it all the time on Facebook. People post their, 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 their joys, their successes and everything else. And, and when I learned to take vulnerability, because God gave me a gift of my, my, my challenges I had six years ago that like woke me up. Um, I was 38 years old and my life was crashing to an end. And literally it was cra like, I wanted to, like there was trees that I would drive by thinking like that tree, I think could kill me. Like that's the one I need to go to because your brain is so messed up and fogged up that you don't, you don't know anything else and you don't feel like you have a purpose. And, and there's no way out. And so you're just like, what am I going to do? And so when I hear the 87%, my brain, for those of you that are looking for a book, and Chad knows this book as well, The Secret, I'm telling you, because as soon as I heard 87%, I go, what are the 13% doing? What are the 13% doing? What do they got? I want to be the 13%. I want to be into that. And what can I do to help the 87% come over here? That's where my brain goes. Because we all have the potential we just choose the path of least resistance, which puts us in a comfort position. And that's why we don't talk about money. You know, we use past experiences. You and I talked about what money meant to us when we were growing up. And money was just not where it was for me. And it was like how I brought up was like it was a different form for me. And so when you have the right people around you, the right environment, and you're having the right conversations right. with money, 
then it becomes uh, different. And then you use it as to be able to help build wealth and you use it to help your children. Like I tell people all the time, I was just doing was an, just an event and I was telling people and there were a large amount of people who had a lot of money. I said, how many are taking care of living their best life? How many of them are taking care of their kids? And I said, you're right. Yeah, we're going to do that. But now it's about taking care of your grandkids. What are you leaving behind? I'm not working for my kids anymore. My kids are taken care of. They will always be taken. Now I got to work for my grandkids. And where does that work? And that's my passion. That's my purpose for what I'm doing for my family. So, Chad, any any last minute comments you want to add, buddy? Anything you want to share to the group? So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'll, I'll share this. Um, I, again, I believe everybody's created on purpose for purpose. And I believe that everybody has a next step to become better. And even the best can become better. But I do want to, I know you and I are going to do some stuff in the future. I want to plant a seed real quick on the financial piece. You know, why I do what I do can be found in this story right here. I had a guy, he saw me, I wrote a book a while back, Wake Up Your Retirement. And um, he reached out to me. He said, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? I know there's other stuff out there to do. What you doing? You involved in that? I said, well, let's talk. We talked. He had some money with an institution that everybody knows. And we said, okay, this is what I do. Let's see if you stay on this road. This is what your retirement's going to look like when you're 65 years old. This is how much you'll be able to turn into a paycheck. And it was about Thirty-one to thirty-three thousand dollars a year, and that was before taxes. I think taxes are going up or down in the future. <laughs> so I let him tell me because here's another thing: I'm not going to inflate stuff to make my stuff look better. Okay, I'm just going to show you math. Well, we put our Shamalama Wiser on it. Okay. And now it went from 31 dollars to $33,000 a year before taxes to one hundred and five dollars to $108,000 a year tax-free. Boom. Okay, that's great, right? That's great. Here's the kicker. He goes back and asks for the account numbers to his guy. And the guy said, what you going to do? Well, he began to tell him, do you know that the guy looked at him and said, ah, we could have done that for you. What do you mean you could have done that for me? That's me. That's that's what I'm saying. So you just told the guy without telling him, I could have got you three times the amount in retirement. I didn't know you wanted to do that. I, I don't usually do that in my practice. That's what he ultimately told him. But let me tell you something, that's just phase one. About five, four or five months ago, they saw each other again. And this is after five years of making this transition. Do you know that guy reached out to him, still practicing at the same institution? And he said, hey, Jeff, I got all my money in that strategy too. But he's not soliciting that because it's not profitable for him. Period point blank and something's got to change guys that's why people are having to go back to work at walmart that's why people are having to scrape the bottom because they don't know and it takes people you gotta wake up you know, wake up i get excited about this stuff it's friday <laughs> let's go baby <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. And that's why I'm excited about talking to you later about partnering. I mean, guys, can you imagine this? What you don't know, you don't know. And I just I'm looking at Chris on here because he's one of uh, our lenders that we have on here. And to people that we partner with, to people that we work with, it drives me crazy when people will say like they shop around for rates and then they go back to the person who, who they had a conversation with. And the next thing you know, well, I could get you that rate too. Well, why the hell didn't you give me the rate to begin with? Like, why do I have to go all through this nonsense to learn something else and then come back to you? And then all of a sudden you can get that. And uh, I, I saw Chris's presentation he did yesterday and hats down to you, man. That was awesome. And what you did and what you shared with people. Guys,
guys, sharing and helping people not to be able to take advantage of anybody, but just for the, the right reasons, what it's all about. So if you guys want Chad back on here, um, please give us a thumbs up. Give us a heart. Give us a like. Chad put his information inside the chat. Um, one of the things I do have conversations with the people that are speaking with us is I want them to be, I'm like, Hey, I'm going to ask you to put your stuff out there, be able to contact with them. They want to be able to direct you. Like, I, I don't want it to go to an ISA, a VA or anything else. He's like, no, man, I'm going to give you everything I got. So literally that's his information that is on there. So make sure you go on, on to the chat. Uh, him and I are going to be partnering some and doing different things together in the future. So hopefully you guys got some really good value out of it. Chad, I can't thank you enough, man, for, for your passion, your energy, um, for taking time out of your day to be with us this morning, especially on a Friday. I know Fridays are always unique, but I think Fridays are important because it's for the people that want to be here. You know, it's easy mm -hmm. to be on calls Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then things start to go down as the week ends. And then like, you know, how many part, how many times I've heard, are you taking off tomorrow? Like the kids have off tomorrow. Like, are you taking off? It's like a hurricane day. I'm like, no, it's not a hurricane day. It's like, okay, there might be a hurricane, but like, it's just a breeze and rain right now. I can work at least half of the morning in case I have to do something, but like, there's no, you can't have time off. So that's why I like putting valuable people on Fridays because the people are here. You got something from that. And thank you, Chad, for being here this morning, brother. Yeah. Look me up on Facebook too. Um, you can, I mean, be my friend if you want to You can be my friend. I'll be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> or hit me up on Black Diamond Money Moves on Facebook. Wake up your purpose. Hey, it don't matter. Hit me up. I'd love Chad, to. Chad, you got access to the Brock Zevans Mindset Motivational Group on Facebook. So feel free to put your information out there. Put your logo, contact, whatever it is, website to be able to put on there. Um, okay. Because those that um, are, are able to, some of the people watch it on recording because we recorded the call. So they're going to watch it later. We do get people in the evening so they can go back and look that as well. Sounds good. Thank All you, right, guys. guys. Chad, I appreciate you. And um, we're going to quickly go to our team meeting. Chad, if you got, you got to go, I know we'll touch base here very shortly. Um, you're more than welcome to listen in. Facebook world, thank you so much for being on. We're going to finish up our team meeting here and uh, get into that. Uh, Facebook, if you have any questions or anything else that you need from us, feel free to reach out to us um, and take a look at uh, the Brock Zevans Mindset Motivation Call. Also, Facebook world, before I end in Zoom world, don't forget, I got that. I got four more seats, okay? Four more. I haven't even pushed it on my public page yet. I got four more seats for that Facebook thing. Chad was part of that group, okay? You see the value of why I paid the money I paid to be around these type of people who bring what they bring? It's a different world. Imagine like 20 Chads in a room, and I'm like, I'm like in like, holy smokes, everybody. I'm like, all right. And, um, you know, so I'm trying to like, like be involved in some capacity in that that becomes part of limiting beliefs. Like I belong in here too. Um, but I, I say that, that don't forget it's that Brock Z, uh, BZ three coaching LLC.com. I'll put it in the post here. So you get it, but I do have four more seats. They filled up quickly. Um, if I don't get anybody filled up by, uh, 10 o'clock today, cause I got, I'm actually meeting chat again. I'm going to open it up to the, um, other the public so other agents can be part of it but um great stuff on facebook we'll have i just threw it in the chat so make sure you get on that and i will put on facebook since facebook is here i don't want to forget them um all right